Spectrum One is a big deal. You get Spectrum Internet with the most reliable internet speeds, free advanced Wi-Fi for enhanced security and privacy, and a free Spectrum Mobile Unlimited line with nationwide 5G included, all while saving big. For the big speed, big reliability, and big savings you want, get Spectrum One. Just $49.99 a month for 12 months. Visit spectrum.com slash big deal for full details. Offer subject to change. Valid for qualified residential customers only. Service not available in all areas. Restrictions apply. If you travel, you know when it comes to love. See you soon. Can't wait. The sky is no limit. You know with your Delta Amex card, being oceans apart means meeting in Aruba. And booking a war travel with your card means saving 15% on Delta flights. You know kissing under the bridge of size guarantees eternal love. Because you're the long distance lovebirds. It's why you're a Delta Sky Miles Platinum American Express card member. If you travel, you know. Take off 15 discount not applicable to partner operated flights or taxes and fees. Terms apply. Visit go.amex slash you know. Selling your car to Carvana is as easy as... As easy as pie? Sure. All you have to do is enter your license plate or VIN. As easy as a stroll in the park. Okay. Then just answer a few questions and you'll get a real offer in seconds. As easy as singing. Why not? Schedule a pickup or drop off and Carvana will pay you that amount right on the spot. As easy as playing guitar. Actually, I find that kind of difficult. But selling your car to Carvana is as easy as can be. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get an instant offer today. Hi, listeners. Welcome back. I'm Nedra Glover Tawab, and you need to hear this. As you may have noticed, we've had a small break, and during that time, I have watched enough holiday movies for all of us. Yes, I am still watching holiday movies in January. There are so many now. When I was growing up, it was like six. Now, there are like 60 per streaming service, and... I want to see them all. You know, I'm I'm still centering the joy of the season. So um, we're back and I spent my time, you know, watching movies, spending time with my family, getting clear about my intentions for 2024, doing a whole lot of, you know, going to bed early, connecting with friends. It's been a really restorative time. And I hope it's been the same in your life. I hope that, you are clear about the intention, you know, for 2024, the intention for today, the intention for this week, you know, what do you want to feel more of? What do you want to feel less of? Those sort of things. So, you know, I, that new, the new year is really like a refresh. And so is your birthday. And so is any day, you know, so let's not just say, okay, I didn't do it January 1st. Tomorrow is a day to have a new year. So, This week, we will be talking about competition in friendships. Now, I don't know about you, but I've certainly had some friendships where I would like to think maybe I wasn't the competitor, but mm, not necessarily true. I wouldn't say that I was competing, but I have felt something. And when that feeling comes up for some of us, it's like get mad at the other person or do something in your own life. Get mad at this other person or, you know, leave the relationship. And it's also possible that you can work on your stuff because anytime that we're jealous of someone or we see something that we really want, it is a a clarity moment. It is a time for us to say, ah, that's what that is. It's not that they shouldn't have it. They don't need it. We need to be better than them at this thing. It's wow, maybe I want that too. And not in the same way, because sometimes we want stuff, but not in the exact same way as someone else. What I've discovered about competition in relationships is when we try to capture that thing that someone else has that we think we need to get from them or have just like them, it doesn't feel as good to us because it wasn't our thing to have. Our stuff is different. When you can be clear about what your relationships should look like and, you know, how other people should show up in theirs or do show up in theirs, you know, it feels a little bit better about not having the exact same thing. So let's start today's letter. I'm married and I love my husband dearly. I had a good relationship with his family prior to his brother being dumped by his then-girlfriend six-ish years ago. 
I met with the girlfriend after the breakup for coffee, and she alleged that she had been physically, mentally, and emotionally abusive, and she was afraid for her life when around him. She also trashed my husband and his parents. I didn't believe it and wanted nothing to do with her afterwards, but she kept texting me and giving me updates even after I said I didn't think we should talk any longer and I would be deleting her from social media and my phone to make that separation. Well, their grandmother fell ill, died, and she showed back up out of nowhere to be a good friend. She was simultaneously dating other men and stringing my brother-in-law along. I told their mother about it because he didn't listen to me and she tried to keep him away from me. The family hated her. They all had derogatory nicknames for her, but were never vocal with him about their disapproval. He began hiding her and threw a literal tantrum because no one bought her anything for her birthday. His parents began speaking to her again after that, but I still kept my distance. A year or so later, at a family wedding, they got so intoxicated and she tried grinding on my husband. She came running across the dance floor butt first, so I stood up and blocked her, causing her to bounce off me. She looked at me and I said, no, what are you doing? She ran off with my brother-in-law and was fine. Well, something happened between them, so she started crying, screaming, causing a scene, and accusing me of pushing her out of a family picture. They were escorted out by his parents because at that point they were both crying and screaming. They were both in their mid to late 20s, by the way. My husband and I were blamed the next day and given the silent treatment. They didn't speak to us for weeks until I spoke with my mother-in-law and we addressed the issue. She never spoke with them, just accepted their version of events. Even though the family picture I allegedly pushed her out of was posted on social media the very next day. They got engaged that December, and we got engaged a few days after them. Ours was planned. Theirs was rushed because he was transferred out of state for training. Nothing really changed then because the world shut down on March of 2020. My brother-in-law completely ignored me, pretended I didn't exist every single time he saw me. And when they were together, it was even worse. Nothing was said to them or done. In September of 2020, my mother-in-law ambushed me into a conversation with them and blamed me for the tension. I refused to converse and said they should have asked us if and when we could speak as we had plans that day. I walked out of the room to leave for our plans and she followed me out trying to manipulate me by calling me a good person. She proceeded to accuse me of assaulting her at that wedding while they were slow dancing and leaving bruises, stealing my brother-in-law's credit card and using it, hitting her car with our car and stealing her shoes. Obviously, none of this was true and there was no evidence of any of this. I'm hearing your response to the brother-in-law's fiance, girlfriend. I'm wondering Is there a collective agreement that this person is not healthy? And how do we handle, you know, I think this is a bigger conversation around when we have a family member who is in a relationship that is unhealthy for them, how do we show up in the relationship with that person and how do we show up in a relationship with their partner? In some instances, we may choose not to have a relationship with their partner, which it sounds like you're saying, I don't want to buy this person a gift. I don't want to extend any invites to this person. You are my family that I will have a relationship with. I wonder how helpful is it for us to tell people that we don't like who they're dating or that this person isn't good for them. Sometimes saying that can damage the relationships that we have with, you know, this person who is, you know, being emotionally abused or physically abused. And what might be more helpful is to support them through this. So when they're ready to leave or they're ready to take action, you're the person that they're able to come to. When we fight against them being in this relationship, sometimes that pushes them closer to them. You know, it pushes them right into the arms of this person we want them to get away from. So the language around what I think about your spouse needs to be, you know, very gentle and yet direct. Is it possible 
that if someone is staying in a relationship and they're having these issues that you can say, you know, hey, um, I know you want to continue to be with this person and I love you deeply, but also it is hard for me to hear you talk about the things happening. And I would like you to find some other support for venting. Because it's not always that I directly have this issue with the person, but I may always hear these terrible things about this person. And so even when they're in the company of you, you're not taking on just the issues they have with you, but also the issues that they're having in their relationship with this other person. So it sounds like a triangle, you know, as we call it, you've been triangulated into the relationship. You are now this third figure in their relationship. And of course, you're going to be upset. Of course, this stuff is, you know, not ideal. But I wonder if you are in the correct space in this relationship. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. Travel is all about choosing your own adventure. With your Chase Sapphire Reserve card, sometimes that means a ski trip at a luxury lodge in the Swiss Alps with a few of your closest friends. And other times, it means a resort on a private beach with no one else in sight. Wherever you decide to go, find the detail that moves you with unique benefits at hand-selected hotels from Sapphire Reserve. Chase, make more of what's yours. Learn more at chase.com slash sapphire reserve. Cards issued by J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Subject to credit approval. Farm to store in days, not weeks. That's 80 Acres Farms. Did you know most salads travel over 2,000 miles to reach your plate? But not 80 Acres Farms. Their crisp salad greens and herbs are food less traveled. They stay fresher for longer in your fridge. My salad lasts all week long, which means less food waste and easy meal planning. Oh, and did I mention there's zero need to wash these greens? Because 80 Acres Farms uses zero pesticides. Visit 80acresfarms.com to learn more and find their salads and salad kits at your local Harris Teeter. I would fly. CBS Sunday after Super Bowl 58. Hello? There's no case. You interested? My son ran away from home. My wife hasn't called. My sister is missing. It's the debut of a new hero. With the hope I can keep you alive. I'm gonna do whatever I can to find your son. People don't like strangers asking a lot of questions. I need anything that'll help me find this missing kid. Should have left town already. Not until the truth comes out. What did you do? The man who took Jill is not his father. No! No! Justin Hartley stars. You're okay? You were worried about me, were you? This much. Yep. That's all you get. Tracker, part of CBS Premier Week, Sunday after Super Bowl 58 on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. My mother-in-law was in the other room and said nothing to defend me or try to stand up for me with them. She gave us the silent treatment for weeks again. My husband didn't say much either, but did call her out for the ridiculous accusations. They never apologized or even tried to take accountability for what they said, but left a gift bag outside of our door that Christmas. I should also mention that we lived on the first floor of my in-law's home and really can't escape them. I allowed them to attend our wedding and even allowed my brother-in-law to be in our wedding party. I should also add that he rolled his eyes the entire ceremony and gave us dirty looks throughout. They never apologized and things never improved. In fact, she accused me of trying to kill her because I sent them a wedding thank you card. She perceived the thank you card as a death threat somehow. There wasn't even any additional message aside from the generic thank you that went on every card, but my in-laws coddled and comforted her, but never confronted her on it or tried to address it. Sounds like your in-laws are trying to have a relationship with their son and his wife and them aligning with you would impact that. So they are playing it safe and not choosing sides, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, I I think that they want to have family gatherings. They want to be able to be a part of their son's life. And she seems to be a part of it as well. When you know that something 
is off or someone is lying or someone is causing some sort of chaos, you do not need a group of people to align with you for that to be true. If you have this information of her saying, oh, you sent me a death threat by sending me a thank you card. I don't I don't know if you need confirmation from anyone else. I do wonder if you need limited contact with her. You know, how how did you receive this information that she took it as a death threat? Was it said directly? Was it said via text? Was it said through someone else and they came back and told you? You know, it's possible to say to someone, hey, guess what? You know, uh, I don't want any messages from this person. If they don't talk to me directly, I don't want to hear uh, third hand or, you know, secondhand what's going on in this person's brain about me. How do you protect your conversations around what is said or not said regarding this person? Um, Sometimes we like to think like, I don't like drama. I don't like chaos. I don't like a lot of confusion while running toward it. And so I'm just wondering if you truly do not like any drama, how do you say out the drama of all of this? Let's keep listening. Much to mine and everyone else's surprise, they married last year. The last couple of years has been a one-sided competition on her end. They asked to live on the third floor, but were denied, so they bought a house a few blocks away. My brother-in-law and her got into another huge argument at another family wedding when my father-in-law danced with us, but refused to dance with them. Every single time we would spend time with my in-laws, she would call or text information to make herself known. Still no apology or accountability on their end. My in-laws treat them way better than they treat us. They get away with everything and anything without consequences. We get the silent treatment for weeks. They even ignored us when we adopted our dog because it upset them. They celebrated their dog and were excited for them. When they got engaged, the in-laws celebrated with them. When we got engaged, they stood in the hallway, said congratulations, and left. You know, when we are stating that someone is in competition with us, Is it that we're looking for these similarities or is it by chance they also need a place to live? And, you know, you seem to be in a pretty cozy spot, right? Like if you're living with the in-laws, you know, maybe it's like, well, this is the best place for us, too. We can save money. Does that necessarily mean, oh, my gosh, they're trying to live how we're living? You know, if he doesn't dance with them, they, you know, get upset because, you know, like these sort of things. Like, I think it could be a bit blurry when you're talking about family in particular, Um, because with family, it's like, well, you know, if you had two children and you bought one a car, wouldn't you buy the other one a car? Like, is that competition or is that fairness to some extent? So some of these things that might seem a bit competitive might be a fight for fairness and reciprocity in the relationship. And I'm not saying, hey, there's no competition there, but The things that you're highlighting, are those the competitive areas? You know, maybe there are some other areas like, you know, you buy a purse, she buys the same purse or, you know, things like that where there is some competition happening. But in terms of parents and living arrangements and these sorts of things, it's like, is it a battle for fairness? I want the same thing that you have, that treatment that you're receiving. I'd like to receive that same treatment. Sometimes our biggest issue with people is that we're looking for people who have never been nice to start being nice to us or to change their behavior or, you know, why why aren't they doing this thing? And it's like they don't have to. They don't want to. They don't have to. Maybe they don't know. I think a lot of the learning that we have to do, it requires time. You know, maybe they're not in the, the space to do it yet. And if I know that you have certain qualities, I have the opportunity to figure out, once again, how do I invite you to these gatherings without having the expectation that you will celebrate me? 
You know, if I want you there as family, everybody may not celebrate me equally. Do I want you there if that's the case? Or am I requiring that everybody comes by and shakes my hand? You know, like what what are the rules for you with engaging with this couple? Are the rules even clear? Let's take a quick break. Is it a stay in or a go out kind of Friday night? The choice is yours. Find the detail that moves you with three times points on dining, including takeout from Chase Sapphire Reserve. Learn more at chase.com slash Sapphire Reserve. Cards issued by JP Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Subject to credit approval. Terms apply. Did you know that most salads travel over 2,000 miles to reach your plate, but not with 80 Acres Farms? Their crisp salad greens and herbs are food less traveled, going from farm to store in days, not weeks. They stay fresher for longer in your fridge. My salad lasts all week long, which means less food waste and easy meal planning. Oh, and did I mention there's no need to wash these greens? Because 80 Acres Farms uses zero pesticides. Visit 80acresfarms.com to learn more and find their salads and salad kits at your local Harris Teeter. I would fly CBS Sunday after Super Bowl 58. Hello? There's no case. You interested? My son ran away from home. My wife hasn't called. My sister is missing. It's the debut of a new hero. With the hope I can keep you alive. I'm going to do whatever I can to find your son. People don't like strangers asking a lot of questions. I need anything that will help me find this missing kid. Should have left town already. Not until the truth comes out. What did you do? The man who took Jill is not his father. No! No! Justin Hartley stars. You're okay? You weren't worried about me, were you? This much. Yep. That's all you get. Tracker, part of CBS Premier Week, Sunday after Super Bowl 58 on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. My brother-in-law and his now wife announced that they are expecting next year. They already get away with murder, so they'll be untouchable now, and I'm dreading it. I'm not happy for them and really feel like it's terrible news, which is awful because it's not the fetus's fault. My husband and I have started trying to conceive, so it's also upsetting me for that reason. I'm just so tired of this family and want peace. But at the same time, I feel like I deserve an apology. My in-laws want nothing more than for us to forget everything that happened and to move on, regardless of our feelings, because they're family. They've said this multiple times. I don't consider them my family. Family is supposed to love you and care for you. I don't feel loved by them or even welcomed by them. I just don't know what to do anymore, and I'm tired. My husband has spoken with his brother as well as his parents and tried to repair things without any success. There are always promises, but never any follow through. Do you have any advice or suggestions? Thank you. Have you tried to have a conversation? What are the things exactly that you're wanting an apology for? Are there any apologies on your end that need to be issued to them? You know, sometimes we think about, oh, my gosh, they need to apologize to me. Well, maybe you have some things that you need to apologize for. Although you're having challenges with this couple, that has nothing to do with them becoming parents. And I wonder how you will perform as an aunt and how your husband will perform as an uncle separate from your relationship challenges with their parents. You know, to say they already get away with murder and they're going to be untouchable because of this baby. I'm hearing a bit of competition in your language. It's almost like who can have the baby first? And that's the person who is, you know, the greater couple. And That may not be true in the eyes of your in-laws. It may be that all of their grandchildren are treated well. Now we're we're getting into a territory of I just know and this is going to be, you know, terrible. And it's, you know, it's not just them being competitive with you. I'm also hearing some competition in terms of timeline. And I get that you're in this place of 
wanting your own family, but it's really important to treat others, especially when you're saying, well, they should do this and they should do that. Are you doing those things with them? You know, you're upset at them for not congratulating you at your engagement. Are you congratulating them with this pregnancy? Are you matching their energy or are you being the energetic in charge force that you can be with your integrity intact? Because let me tell you, if you're saying, well, if y'all didn't care about my engagement, I don't care about your baby shower. What's the difference between her and you? You need to hear this. With in-laws, what are we expecting from them? It's really important to be clear about that question because some of us, we have an idea of who they should be, how they respond, and they are human beings. And despite you entering the family, they already have their own charge in life. So get clear about whether or not your expectations are even valuable in the family that you're entering. Because sometimes your values are a mismatch for your in-laws. It could be perfect for you and your partner and the people in your house. And it does not fit with your in-laws. It doesn't mean, oh my gosh, we can't be in relationship. But how can I be in a relationship with a person who fill in the blank, right? How do I show up in relationships that are not ideal? Your work is to figure out how to engage in family dynamics without being the producer of the drama. You Need to Hear This is an iHeart production hosted by me, Nedra Glover Tawab. Our executive producer is Joelle Bonique. Our senior producer and editor is Mia Dawn Taylor. Send us a voice memo with your questions about boundaries and relationships at you need to hear this at iHeartMedia.com. Please be sure to rate our show wherever you listen to it and share this episode with someone who needs to hear this. Talk to you next time. New CBS Sunday. You collect rewards, right? This is how I make my living. When something is lost, everyone's looking for something. He finds it. You strong swimmer? So-so. So-so. So-so's okay. Justin Hartley stars. How you survive, you make quick, smart decisions. If you never let panic take the wheel. Sounds cool. It is cool, actually. Very cool. Tracker. New Sunday on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Farm to store in days, not weeks. That's 80 Acres Farms. Did you know most salads travel over 2,000 miles to reach your plate? But not 80 Acres Farms. Their crisp salad greens and herbs are food less traveled. They stay fresher for longer in your fridge. My salad lasts all week long, which means less food waste and easy meal planning. Oh, and did I mention there's zero need to wash these greens? Because 80 Acres Farms uses zero pesticides. Visit 80acresfarms.com to learn more and find their salads and salad kits at your local Harris Teeter. Introducing Uber Teen Accounts. If you have a teenager, you probably drive them around a lot. Maybe you're even driving them right now. New Uber Teen Accounts are a parent-supervised Uber account with always-on safety features that let your teen request a ride when you can't take them yourself. Your teen gets to ride with a highly rated driver, and you get to follow along with real-time notifications and live trip tracking in your Uber app. Add your teen to your Uber account today. Available in select locations. See app for details. Then see app for details. Then see app for details. Then see app for details.